Look at it. It is nothing but a coat hanging on the door. It's nothing but a coat hanging on the door. I moved all the furniture to my liking. I made everything safe. Look at all the bed curtains. Oh, then I'll not see what's there. Oh, come on, you're a grown man. Covering the Ipswich elections has provided some rich entertainment. The worst crowd of Worst crowd of hypocrites I've never seen. I was thinking about that cereal I've promised Mr. Sloan. It is nothing but a coat hanging on the door. Still, you look at me. There, now you cannot hurt me. I've had to move the bed, you see, so that I may sleep with my head pointing north. So, all will be well. I should sleep. My dear sir, I implore you, give me refuge. I have had a shock, sir. A most terrible shock. Who the devil are you? Upon my word, sir, I never would have dreamt of such a thing. Please, sit down. I had left my watch upon the table downstairs, you see, sir, where I had enjoyed a brandy or two with another gentleman. Then, upon returning to my room, I realised. With my candle, I set out to retrieve it, which I did. Coming back, all those stairs, they were difficult to climb, and the, the, the endless corridors. I became quite lost. I tried many doors. And at last, I thought that I had found my room, and I went in. Well, go on. So. I, I went in and got undressed, got into bed and, and drew the curtains. Then, imagine, if you will, sir, 
I fear. When I heard another presence in the room. A presence? Yes. And pray, sir, what action did you take? Well, I had to make my presence known, sir. Do you see? What could I do? Delicacy would not permit me to be seen by a lady in my nightcap. A lady? Yes, sir. <laughs> I was in a lady's bedroom. Time was against me, so I shouted out, Ham! Very loudly. Pray, sir. What was the lady's response? I regret a violent one. She screamed most horribly <laughs> and pushed me out of the room. She threatened me with an umbrella. I, I had no candle and needed assistance. And so you see, I am at your mercy, sir. Quick, quick, hide. Can I help you? Where is he? Where is the brute? With respect, madam, are you referring to me? I trust, sir, that you are a gentleman. But there is a rogue in our midst, a bespectacled rogue, sir, who has affronted my modesty. I am but a helpless female, sir, as you see. This is a most shocking tale, madam. I did think I thought I heard some footsteps come past my door a few minutes back. Uh, please, take my coat for the sake of your modesty. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Very well. I will pursue the rascal. I will call the constable. Is no woman safe? <sighs> sir, it's safe to come out. God bless you, sir. You have my undying gratitude, Mr. Dickens. Charles M. <laughs> and you are? A bit quick, sir. At your service. This is a hazardous place, sir. Sir? Rather cold in those corridors. Please take my coat. Uh, I, I couldn't. No, possibly, no, no. Sir. I insist. Well then, sir. Thank you. I bid you good night. Good night. I do hope Mr. Pickwick doesn't meet his nemesis in those dark corridors. Candle. He should have a candle. Mr. Pickwick! Pickwick! Mr. Pickwick! <laughs> this place is like a barn. As cold as one.
the Pickwick Papers. <laughs> it is nothing but a coat hanging on the door. Mr. Gibson. Mr. Gibson. Mr. Gibson. Uh, good evening, David. Good evening, Mr. Gibson. And how are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. And yourself? I'm fine. How, how old is your little one now? Oh, uh, young Sebastian. He turned three last month. Three? Goodness. Doesn't time fly? Uh, the same as usual, sir. The same, David. No flowers this year? Uh, no, no, not this year. Well, you know we can always arrange something for you. If uh, you... I felt it was getting a bit stale, you know, a bit of a cliché. Of course. Mm. Well, you're all booked in. Room 218. Thank you. Oh, one other thing. How do I look? You look perfectly handsome, Mr Gibson. That's good to know. That is good to know. I brought you some flowers. Oh, beautiful. How was your journey? Fine. Did you remember to lock the back door? And I turned off the light in the hall and... Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Here, let me take this. You don't need it. Come on, stand up straight. Cheers. They look after us well here, don't they? As long as we keep coming. <laughs> 40 years. Not many people have married this long. When do we get the letter from the Queen? <laughs> That's from the 60th, dear. Diamond. This is our ruby. Oh, so she'll send us the crown jewels? Maybe a nice bottle of ruby red. <laughs> 40 years. Can you believe it? I can not believe it. I was there. For most of it. A different world 40 years ago. This room's certainly different. This new wallpaper. Ugh. There's no accounting for taste these days. Or cleanliness. You know, maybe it hasn't changed that much after all. I think they've just painted over the cracks. <laughs> Stars change. Which reminds me, I found something today. Show me what you found, Timothy. Never. Where did you find this? In the loft. I had a rummage when Richard came to fix the boiler. You know, some images in my mind are like smoke. They come to me quickly but break away before I have a chance to hold on to them. But this, the day you came home, it's as clear to me now as it was then. Have you shown the children? I showed Daniel. He loved it. Of course. He can put it in that family tree he's making. I think these were some of my favourite days. Strange how I can have such fond memories of such dark times. Everything's better in the past. 
especially the wallpaper. Especially the wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> we could always add a splash of paint. <laughs> this wine's a nice shade of red. Oh, come on, let's dance. No, 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 my legs aren't up to it. Yes, they are. I said no. Good evening, Mr. Gibson. Where's David? David's finished his shift. I thought he finished at nine. Not these days, no. I suppose he wants to be with his son. Ah. Dinner for two? Uh, yes. Uh, right, thank you. I'll take it. Can I help you? No, that's all. Thank you. OK. some new staff this year. David's not around this evening. Did you know his son is three now? Yes, I heard. How lovely. I'm not in a hurry to look after a toddler again, though. Oh? Well, remember Sophie? Not so much. Too sleep-deprived most of the time. <laughs> exactly. We didn't do too badly, though. Did we? Well, with Sophie. I mean, they both turned out OK, didn't they? So we can't have done a terrible job. Julia, I think we did a marvellous job. Daniel looks after me much better than I looked after him these days. <laughs> Still your favourite? Well remembered. Hmm. Are you OK? I'm happy. I'm happy with everything we did, everything we've done. Me too, my lovely. Me too. Julie, where's all this coming from? I don't think we should come back next year. I mean, I don't think you should come back next year. Tim. Forty years, Tim. Well, here's to fifty. It's been so wonderful. Every single year, every single minute has been perfect. But you don't need me anymore. Not silly old me. <laughs> I miss you so much. I miss you every single day. I miss you too, darling. Don't take this away. I don't want to. But we both know I have to. Yes. I know. I know. Will you do something for me? Anything. Anything for you.
careful with my machine. Machine? Shall we proceed? I've been working here 20 years. I ain't never seen a ghost. The Ghost Club have heard many stories originating from this hotel. Ghost Club? You've got a club? What are you doing here, then? It's where you'll find your ghosts. No. The Ghost Club is not a club for ghosts. We explore unexplained phenomena and seek out links between this mortal coil and the spirit plane. Dickens was a member. Come in. Good day, madam. Good day. Good day. Good day. And what can I do for you? I'm the manager. You have my congratulations. Is that all? Uh, yes. Hmm. I mean, no. I, I understand you're conducting an investigation. Of sorts? An investigation into the paranormal. Yes, that is correct. Well, do you have to? I don't have to do anything, but I want to, and so I shall. Mm. May I present to you the creation that will make me famous, the Spectre-O-Meter. Funny name. It measures the harmonic frequency of the atmosphere and determines if a spirit lurks among us. It then pinpoints the whereabouts of the spirit and expresses it with this self-perpetuating locus device. What? This arrow. Years of studying the spirit world have left their mark on me, and the moment I arrived at this hotel, I could sense a strong spiritual presence. You could? Oh, dear. Uh, Mr... Erlo. Willie Erlo. Mr Erlo, what do you know of the phantoms that inhabit your hotel? Oh, I don't know. Mr. Erlo, I can tell when information is being withheld from me, especially when the information is being withheld very poorly. Oh. Well, I haven't heard anything myself, but I think some of the guests have. And then there was... Yes? There was that incident with a predecessor of mine. But it's something that the staff of this hotel would much rather forget, which is why we don't discuss what happened with the guests, you see. Uh, Mr. Erlo, I am no ordinary guest. Well, no, of course not. Forgive me. Well? Well, what? What happened? Oh. He was murdered, most unpleasantly, by his wife. Big kitchen knife. Horrible. The guests sometimes hear him crying in the corridors. Poor chap. And the wife? Quite mad. They found her in the bath of room 223. Ah, violent death and suicide. Possible unfinished business. Could be sentient. Excellent. This is excellent. And has the wife's spirit ever been seen? I don't know, and I don't want to know. Ghosts are bad for business. No one wants to stay in a hotel with his ghouls and spectres and what have you. Mr. Erlo, I have travelled all the way from London to stay in this hotel, and for just one reason. The charming rooms? No, Mr. Erlo. The rumours of otherworldly phenomena. If I'm prepared to stay in this hotel for that sole reason, don't you think others will be tempted to do the same? Well, when you put it that way... Now, I'm determined to try my machine here, and I invite you to join me. I'd really... 
I, I don't think... Courage, I... Mr. Erlo. The spirits cannot harm you. Aren't you curious about your hotel and the mysteries here within? Very well. You're going to do it anyway, and I suppose I'd, I'd rather be here when you switch it on. Very good. Let us begin. Only me. Blast! You didn't see a phantom on the other side of that door, did you? No. Can't say that I did. Curses. Failed again. Blast this machine. I came to see what all the noise was about. The lights was flickering downstairs. I heard you talking to someone. Yes, to Mr. Erlo. Mr. Erlo? Yes, Erlo, the manager. He's in the wardrobe. He joined me in my experiment, my failed experiment. Mr. Erlo, you can come out now. Mr. Erlo's dead. What? No, he's in the wardrobe, I tell you. See? It can't be. <laughs> Mr. Erlo? This is the manager of the hotel, is it not? I'm the manager. <gasps> Calm down, Mr. Erno. He was murdered. That's what happened to him. In this hotel. <laughs> Yes, of course. Um, how long are you staying with us, Mr...? Fearless. Peter Fearless. Mr Fearless. A couple of nights. Room 17 is... Well, it's really very comfortable. Is it a quiet room? I need a quiet room. All our rooms are quiet. Well, that's good to hear. Do you need a hand with Just your... key? Good evening. You are not going to believe who's just walked in. Yeah, I heard he had some sort of breakdown. I guess he's all right now.
Malcolm. It's Peter. Peter? Where the hell are you? Suffolk. Ipswich, would you believe? Ipswich? Uh, are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Bloody great, Van Malk. Look, Malk, uh, I've started the new book. Well, P Peter, that that's fantastic. I thought I'd stick with the traditional ghost story rather than guts and gore this time. Suffolk has lots of ghosts and legends. I might borrow a few for the book. As long as you're okay, are you taking your, you know, the... Yes, I'm taking them. I'm not stupid. I just need some peace and quiet to get on with my work, you know? Make us both rich. You told me all the rooms were quiet. Mr Fearless? The dog in the next door room is making it impossible for me to work. We don't allow dogs in here. Oh, plainly not the case. Well, your pipes must be very rusty. My pipes are just fine, thank you. I've had coffee in my room. And a bottle of scotch. Bloody idiot. You dreamt it. Bloody black shuck. Yes. Mr. Fearless? Yes. You have a visitor? Peter! I'm checking out. Miss, my bill? Let's have one for the road. Can I get you another round, gents? It's 
brilliant, Peter. It's brilliant. This is your best work. I can't see me finishing it now. Really? I haven't got it in me, Mel. Not since the breakdown. No, but you, you've made a complete recovery. You're a, a hundred percent fit, according to the dog. Peter Fearless. I used to live up to my name. Now I'm afraid of everything. Spend one more night at the hotel. On me, bottle of Johnny Walker, 40 Rothmans, Old Faithful here. You just let it all hang out and you just see what happens. Spanish villa won't dig its own swimming pool after all. No, not for me, Peter, no. For you. You've got to prove the doubters wrong. You, you've got to prove that you've still got what it takes. There we go, gents. You may not succeed, but as your age, as your, as your friend, I think that you should at least try. Side effects, I'm... writer. You need to talk to the fans. They're, they're the real experts. I'm just here to set an example for them, to help people face their fears. A kind of spiritual guide through troubled times.
Come on. Let's get registered, then we can have a drink. Evening, Squire. What can I do for you? I've booked a room. Mr. and Mrs. Jones. Unusual name. Recently married? Yes, very. Room 27. Along the corridor, up the stairs, turn left, can't miss it. Bathroom is third on the left. Breakfast, 7.30 sharp. Full English? Blimey. Mm -hmm. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Free actually, make a night of it. I told you, I know my way around. Man of the world, me. I can't remember which way we turned. I think we're in here. What is it? Nothing, just can't believe we got away with it. me, don't you? Of course I do, sweetheart. Would I do all this for someone I didn't love? No, I suppose not. Mrs. Jones, get that down here. Yeah. Can't see a thing out there. What's wrong with the lights? It's probably just the wiring. I don't think it's safe. I'll pop downstairs, have a word with the landlord. Maybe we can change rooms or something. Don't be long. Hello? 
Eddie, is this a joke? It was so strange. The light was flickering, and then the room was filled with ash, just drifting through the air like snow. And then I woke up, and you were here. It was dead quiet down there, except for the wireless. And when I came back up, the landlady was waiting in that long passage. So she could make us cocoa if we'd like. I said, maybe later. Well, I could do with that, Coco. It's freezing in here. It'll be warm under the covers. Oh, no. Eddie, I can't. Not now. I'm, I'm scared. You're safe with me. N no, there's something odd in this place. I can't. I paid for it all. Most of my wages. I love you, Betsy. I want you to be all mine. Eddie, I said no! Everything all right, Mrs. Jones? No. I need to go home. Bloody wages. Yeah, very funny. I paid good money for this room. Let me out. Let me out. Just hang on a minute for me, Fred. We've got time before the bus. All right, love. Hello there. How can I help you, madam? I wondered if your wife was around. What's this regarding? She did me a favour the last time I was here. I just wanted to thank her. You must have been a little girl. My wife passed away during the war. Oh dear, I'm so sorry. I must have made a mistake. It's back in 43. Most of the German bombing was over the docks or on Ransom's, the munitions factory. I was a warden on duty, but I didn't like leaving her. Not in her condition. She promised me she'd be able to get down to sell her if it got bad, but um, in the end, she didn't have time. Bomb hit the east wing of the hotel. Brought it all down. Seven dead. Including my Daphne. I was so sure it was this hotel. Room 27B. But the B rooms were all in the East Wing. Bomb took them all down. Right. Come on, Fred. Let's catch our bus.
As of now, you are a representative of this hotel, and you must always present yourself smartly. This is for you. Oh, actually, it's Maisie. Any further questions, direct them to Tom. Is she always like that? Always. Don't worry, it's easy to win her approval. Just think, Victorian servant. Be seen and not heard. Don't have any ideas of my own. Anything else? Try not to smile. Come along. <laughs> they don't clean themselves. We better go. Daisy. All the rooms on this floor need to be spotless by one o'clock. Remember, the devil's in. The detail. I have high hopes for you, Daisy. Maisie. All right. I'll start at the end, and we'll meet in the middle. Last one to finish buys the first drinks. All right. See you later then, Daisy. Kidding me. That is a mess. I just cleaned this room. You didn't do a very good job. No, I mean I've already cleaned this room. Okay. Well, I need more polish. Staff never ring the bell, Daisy. There's a problem. A problem? Yes, the room, room 116. I've tried to clean it, but it refuses to stay clean. Look, there are two types of people in this world, Daisy. Those to whom the world happens, and those who happen to the world. You're going to go back to that room and show it who's boss. Conquer it. Please, can I just show you? Time's slipping away, Daisy.
Tom, have you seen Daisy? No. Can you give her a hand to finish by one? So my reward for finishing early is to do more work? Practice makes perfect. Oh, and don't get too distracted. Maisie. Maisie? you have a pleasant stay and if there's anything we can do anything at all just ask thank you What are you doing in my room? I'm, um, checking for... Mice. Mice? No, not mice. Um, rabbits. Rabbits? Yeah. Yeah, they could be a really big problem. Always, always chewing things. I've got really big teeth. Hello? Any rabbits in there? What to do with you, Bob? Head office has been on to me, and they're suggesting I let you go. But I've said, no, no, Bob. He's a nice boy. He's a nice boy. Thank you, Mrs. Jones. But I'm not sure you've got what it takes, Bob. Well, I do. It's just... I think you're more of a lost soul. I spent years just drifting around. I don't want to go back there. I need a purpose. I need this, Mrs. Jones. Well, you better buck your ideas up, Bob. Come up with a plan. This is your last chance, and it's curtains. <sighs> Thank you, Mrs. Jones. You won't regret it. Good out. You can do this, Bob. You're not a, a nice boy. You're a... You're a tiger. Grr, grr, grr.
said I should buck my ideas up. What were you thinking, Bob? That poor family were traumatised. I wouldn't be surprised if they sue us. Oh, head office are going to want my head on a block. And to be honest, I'd rather it be yours. Oh, Bob, can't you hide behind the curtains? <laughs> Move a bit of furniture or, or tiptoe round their bedrooms in the night. Or waft up and down the stairs. Punters love that kind of thing. Instead, they get some blithering idiot wanting to chop up their children. I don't know. I guess I'm just not very, you know, ghostly. You must be able to do something, Bob. No. <laughs> I'm a terrible, terrible ghost. Pull yourself together, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> there must be something we can do. <laughs> I've got all sorts of bits and bobs in my wardrobe, Mrs. Jones. I'm a bit of a magpie, to be honest. Hopefully you can find a look that's more suitable. You know, without being too, you know. Bah! Are you preparing to walk through the door? I'm trying to remember where I left my key. Oh, God. Get in, get in. Hello, Mrs. Jones. My name is Mr. Cuddles. Put an outfit on then, shall I? What's that under your arm? It's my head. I'm a headless ghost. Headless ghost? But I can see your head, where your actual head is. Well, I haven't worked on that bit yet. Like I said, I'm, I'm finding this whole ghost thing all very difficult. What other outfits have you got? It's very nice to meet you. No. I've got a present for Mrs. Jones. No. Have we got a problem here, Bob? I'm starting to get... What? A little bit. A little bit? Ticked off. Harsh words, Bob. I've given you loads of options, but you don't seem to like any of them. It's really quite... frustrating. Frustrating? Mm. You should try being a hotel manager. You have to please all the guests all the time, and you have to smile all the time. And when you want to get rid of a member of staff, well, the paperwork is a nightmare. Well, let me tell you something, Mrs. Jones. I might be a rubbish ghost, but I'm certainly no quitter. What's the plan, Bob? One more outfit. Make or break. This is it. Are you ready, Mrs. Jones? 
Let's get on with it. Are you winding me up? <laughs> what? It's a, it's a classic. The absolute pinnacle of ghostliness. The most recognisable and universally appreciated symbol of eeriness. It's ridiculous! I think it makes a statement. I'm a ghost. Deal with it. Take it off. No. Take it off now! No. Get it off! No, I won't. Get it off! Oh. 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 What you've done. You complete and utter idiot. Mrs. wouldn't even trust you with her TV remote. Not exactly a premiere in. It's perfect. Beer's top floor, stair lift broken. Sorry. Remind me to give a bit a smack. Scary as you're driving, Dobby. Uh -huh. Come on. Oh. 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 You're all right, George. Mate. Uh, bit sick. Car sick. Sick of your ugly mug. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? It's probably Hobbit. Or your tinnitus. Oh, come on. Yeah.
Well, you've made it. <sighs> it went like a dream of it. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Vicky boy, we did it. The last of the Deptford Eight. Huh? To the five of us. Got this Tonka and Pat, fallen comrades. God bless Lenny. Like you could have done it without me. I'm surprised you found your way upstairs without a pack of guide dogs. It's enough of your lip censure and you. <laughs> right. Check my money. Every note. Any new ones? Burn them! Oh. Is that your granddaughter? My little Debbie. Isn't she gorgeous? I don't want her ending up like us. She's going to be respectable. It's family that matters, Mick. I'm doing this and she doesn't have to. Is anyone else here? Terry, Dobbin, give the place a look. Make sure. How did you find this place? People say it's haunted. They keep seeing these old, decrepit corpses wandering around. So you two should feel right at home. When I was your age, I was out there with a shooter taking what I was owed. You're just a bedwitter. Sit in front of your laptop and talking like a tart. Well, the days of shooting your way out are long gone. When you've lived as long as I have, you'll find that having the balls to fire a gun buys you a lot of influence in this world. Boss? Boss! <laughs> well? Nothing. Where's Dobby? Who? Dobby! Don't know him. Are you mugging me off? Jackie Dobson! Don't mess me with that towel! Boss! It's just the four of us and the kid. If you all lost it, Dobby was with us tonight! He drove us here! Are you all right? Huh? He's cracking up. Shut up! Boss, <gasps> we're all here, we're all fine, and the main thing is, we've got this. This place reminds me of that pub on the high road. Massive rambling place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Black Horse. <laughs> you used to run that with Lenny Maitland. Right, George? Tricky little fella, Lenny. Disappeared with your money, didn't he? Add up about Lenny mate. Go and get the rest of the gear. OK, boss. Just need to take a leak. Hurry up. What's going on, Tell? Am I cracking up? We're all cream crackered, boss. I can't believe you don't remember Jackie Dobson. I... <sighs> Come on, Mountain. Sort yourself out. Mountain? What mountain? Are you kidding me? Mountain! He's in the Kazi!
There's no one else here, mate. Just the four of us. The four of us? There were six of us just now. Are you scamming me, Mickey? Calm down. Don't go into one. Now, you and I go back a long way, and you know what I do to people across me, so... You gotta tell me what's going on! What's going on is your senile. You, you... Mate, you need to calm down. You're not well. That's right. Take a chill pill. Look, you shut up, Sonny! You've done something to my pills, haven't you? What pills? Oh, I'm gonna get dark with you, son! What's happened to the light? It's derelict, isn't it? The neck has been off for years. Losing it, George. Terry. Brass knuckles. Terry! It's just me and you. The last of the Deptford Five. And Hobbit, if he counts. Deptford Five. Terry! Dobby! You can all come out now! Do I look like the kind of mug that's gonna let you take his money? Is that what Lenny Maitland tried to do? You would. He never ran off with your money. You made sure of it. Yeah. I see the resemblance now. Oh, you're trying to avenge your family. I tell you what, I did kill Lenny. I bricked your granddad up in the basement of the Black Horse Hotel. Oh, yeah, I remember. You sent me down to the cellar to change a barrel. Hit me from behind. Next thing I remember, I'm chained to a pipe. Brick after brick going up in front of me. I begged you for mercy. But you just... You stood there and laughed. Who are you? How many other mates have you double-crossed over the years, eh? What about tonight? You got any plans? What have you done, George? He was one of us! Ah, you remember him. But you don't remember Terry, or Dobby, or Mountain. Please, George! What? <laughs> you want me to think I'm going mad? Big mistake. You should have just killed me. That's what I was going to do to you. Go there. <laughs> the debt for day. They'd like a word, George. What's happened to my Debbie? If you've hurt her! There is no Debbie. There's no family. They never existed. He would have wanted to go on a job with his mates. We said no shooters on this one. You don't reckon he went into no the No way. Door? Not George. He wouldn't turn on one of his own. He was a true gent, all right. We'll take care of your little Debbie, boss. Yeah. He would have done the same for us. He's in a better place now. 